are in Dudley, uh, talking to a number of people about people power change and what it really means locally. Uh, and it's great to be talking here to Dennis Hodgson, who's director of the local strategic partnership, who's been tell us, telling us a bit about the organisational realities of uh, doing stuff in hard times, um, but also some anecdotes of what that means in practice. You had a great one about grass cutting, Dennis. <laughs> the grass cutting one, yes, it's. Uh it's just an example of something locally that perhaps demonstrates what uh, what we're wrestling with in terms of trying to change the relationship between communities and uh, those who deliver services. Uh, and quite simply, it was a, an occasion some months ago now where the local authority, for very obvious reasons, financial cuts, uh, determined that it wasn't was no longer able to cut a certain grass verge in a part of the borough. And the community came forward uh, ultimately and said, "Well, that's not acceptable for for us." Uh, if you can't cut it, then we'll cut it ourselves. And then over a matter of weeks, it played out with the local authorities saying you can't cut that because it's on our land and there's all sorts of issues around that. And then there's a debate over whether they could use the equipment for the local authority and then health and safety inevitably crept in and all that. And it was finally resolved about two months later by a local business uh, businessman stepping in and saying, yes, well, if, uh, rather than this going on indefinitely, I'll step forward, that's part of my business on the landscape, gone, I'll cut it and a local licensee coming forward and said, well, I'll find the funding so it can be done. So in the sense that it was resolved, you could say that was a successful outcome. But actually, what I think what it demonstrates is the sometimes farcical situation where you've got service providers, in this case just happened to be a local authority, could have been any other service provider, in a situation where they could no longer deliver a service, and that's, happening, that's true across the whole of the public sector at the moment. And a community who were accepting of that, there was no issue with the community saying, you know, we want you to do it. The community were fairly reasonably saying, we accept that you, know, you can no longer do what you've been doing in the past. But instead of actually coming together and agreeing ways we could actually do it, so we became a can-do uh, sort of organisation working with the communities, we had this ridiculous situation where the situation wasn't resolved but for somebody else stepping in. And what we're trying to do locally is to sort of preempt that so that in the future where we have to cut services, that in advance of services being cut, we start to engage with those who would have been recipients of that service to see if there are alternative ways we can do it. So I think you've probably heard mention this idea of a public servant, someone who actually is more than just someone who delivers a particular service, someone who is actually there to serve the community and where services go they can actually uh, actually work with the community to see if that service can be delivered in different ways, maybe with some community support, maybe with volunteers and a whole host of different ways. And those are just you know a couple of examples of the sort of thing we're trying to do locally, which is essentially about recognition that, you know, we've got the localism bill, we've got uh, big local, we've got a lot of people trying to change the relationship in communities and in localities. And we're saying for that to happen, it needs two things. It needs a community who want to do more than they're currently doing, and it needs service providers, whoever they are, and that could include businesses as well as the more obvious public sector, being willing to come forward and saying, fine. Let's have that discussion. Let's change the relationship where we engage before things are done and certainly before services are cut. And you mentioned localism, a number of, of, of programmes. We're more than a year into Big Society as it was uh, launched by David Cameron. Um, I think you're evolving your own brand and labels here. What are you calling it? Well, we're calling it our society, and we're <laughs> like, we'd have to make the point that we, we believe we had that term before Big Society was coined. Um, but essentially it's the same thing, what we've said through our community strategy is in terms of what we would want to do, our community strategy is no different to anybody else's in that it actually concentrates on those things that are important to people in communities but the unusual thing about community strategies is the one here is probably the same as the one in Leeds, as the one in Bradford because communities across the country want more or less the same thing, they want good jobs when they, they or their chil children are looking for jobs, they want good education, they want crime to be at low level, they want good health, and all of those sort of things. But we're trying to go beyond that and saying, but well, all this occurs in localities, and how in localities do we make these things happen in ways that they haven't happened in the past? How do we ta address some of the inequalities that exist in, in localities? So we came up with the idea, the notion of our society, what's important to people in localities, and sometimes we're talking about very small localities, communities essentially, and trying to work with them so that we can change the way they are with each other, the way they are with service providers, the way they feel about their neighbourhood. Uh, Dudley's a very, you know, a, a very green 
borough, it's a very affluent borough in part, but within that there are pockets of rural deprivation that have been exactly the same for 30, possibly 50 years. And why is that? Why isn't that, you know, why isn't that changing? We need to get under the skin of that and we need to work with communities in different ways. And, you know, that's for us is what our society, and we think big society is very much along those lines. It is about helping people, uh, sometimes to help themselves, but that's, you know, that can't just be a, a cop-out for service providers just to not do service and expect people to provide it themselves. It's about saying, well, there's some things we can do ourselves, there's some things we want you to do, there's some things we want you to do, but we don't want you to do it in the way you've done it in the past. And that's how that sort of debate about how services are changed in the future and how communities relate differently to those that provide services to them. Can I check in with a question there about community engagement and empowerment, which has been you know, a, a strand of local working for, for years and years, but you're talking about the balances between what the public services can do, what people can do for themselves, what you do in partnership and so forth. So what's different now? Where's the shift come? The shift is a, is a different type of engagement. It's, you know, for many years now, public sector in particular, has spent a lot of time consulting with communities the way the services are provided, and that's fine, it's perfectly affordable. Um, but I think this needs to go further than that. This is about a different type of dialogue. This is working much more closely with communities. It's sometimes about saying, even within services that we're mandated to provide across, across the board, do we deliver those in a way that are helpful to you? Uh, do we deliver them the same in all localities? Are the services we provide equally valued in different parts of the borough? And do we need to do that differently? In some parts of this borough, we have a very healthy, very vibrant voluntary sector. So if you take something like new service provision, you can go to parts of this borough where I would argue that actually the service from the local authority is dwarfed by the services that are developed within the communities. People coming forward to provide football, netball, a whole host of things for children in there. You know, now if that was happening all across the borough, and it's not, but if it were, then you could look at youth service provision being provided in a totally different way. And why is it we can't look at youth service provision and say, well, instead of us funding it direct, could we fund local communities in different ways? Could we provide some of the facilities? Could we open up some of the facilities that we already own? Uh, community buildings, could we let communities use them in different ways? So that, and that's already happening, I'm pleased to say, so that a lot more of these facilities can go on. And can we have a whole borough where youth service provision is almost given out to the public sector? So you're, you're talking about um, sharing, developing, encouraging ideas uh, uh, across the borough. Looking at it nationally, um, how easy is it for people to pick up what other people are, are doing elsewhere and uh, share and learn from each other? Because one of the things that uh, our role uh, in the Power Change Programme is, is to um, help people investigate how to do that using social media, whatever. These days, uh, it's more difficult to go to conferences. There's probably not the budgets and so on. Have you got any ideas on... Um, how that sharing might take place, not just between local authorities, but between everybody that's involved. Well, first of all, I'd, I'd agree with you fully that one of the big obstacles to all this working is there are people right across this country, the length and breadth of the country, working on this initiative in different ways. And as service providers, you have always uh, striven to actually find out what's doing. You don't know, there's no point in actually reinventing the wheel. If somebody's doing something successful somewhere, then let's look at it here. Uh, that's difficult enough when you actually provide services because, as you say, you can't go to conferences, which is, you know, a normal source of getting that sort of information. Um, so you're constantly looking at the network or trying to find communities of practice websites, which we use regularly. But if that's difficult for us, then for communities themselves, that's almost becoming possible. So we're trying to encourage wider use of social media and a whole range of, of tools that, you know, uh, if you take young people, for, for example, using social media in a way that we never do and possibly never will understand. There are ways of doing it that we need to tap into and we need to be much more open to, to what the new world of technology offers to us. Just being a bit cheeky, it seems to me you've got a very lively bunch of people here. Maybe that's the sort of thing you might experiment a bit with uh, here under the Our Society label or, or, or anything else and show the way to some other people. Well we, we did, we had uh, last November we had our first sort of gathering of, of groups, both public sector providers and community groups, to talk about big society. And to, to, to to come together and try and understand what it meant and to take different perspectives on what it meant. And whilst that was going on, and it was the normal thing you'd expect from public service, it was, it was in a hall with speakers and with workshops and all that going on, but we were using Twitter at the same time, so whatever we were discussing, whatever was going, was actually going out, and we were getting live comments coming back from, you know, we, we had some from Westminster come back, and we had people from all over the country coming back 
people excited that we were doing things, but people, uh, you know, telling us or giving us views on what they were doing. So actually, the debate in the room, even if inevitably debate gets to a point where you're looking for somebody else to stimulate it, sometimes that external stimulus moves the debate on another pace. So it was hugely useful. And now we're going to do an event we call Face the People, which is a crime one, which we're looking to use the same sort of social media. So when people say we want to engage, well, yes, there's certain engagement you can do in a room with people there. But actually, with the World Wide Web, you can do all sorts of engagement with people right around the borough, right around the country, if you want to, and make it far more lively. And then that's, for some people, that's quite daunting and quite frightening. But it's the way we're going to have to go. And, uh, you know, I'm pleased to say in Dudley, we started down that path, we're using our colleagues in the voluntary community sector widely to help us with that. And, uh, you know, long may continue.